Hey everybody, welcome to this video. I just really want to say how much I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting and unique video. Uh, I was asked in the comments uh, last week to walk through the process of how to set up the uh, ASICS2 Nomad for uh, sideloading. What steps do you actually go through? Now, it's important to remember that sideloading an app is not... Um, I wouldn't say it's not recommended, but it's not supported by RADA. So they're very clear when you turn on the side load feature that you are uh, taking a certain amount of risk. So making sure that you use sites that are trusted, making sure that you're not installing harmful applications on to uh, the Supernote, and then what the possible consequences are if you do that. So you're taking a little bit of risk. Uh, the main thing is to make sure that you're using trusted sites. As far as I know in this video, uh, we are using trusted sites. Uh, this was highly recommended by Reddit. Uh, users in the Supernode group, uh, since installing these apps, I've not seen any issues uh, other than some compatibility issues. All of that being said, I do have to give you a heads up. Uh, you will not hear me speak during the actual video. Instead, you will hear a computer-generated voice. Uh, what I did uh, was something that was just kind of crazy. Uh, I saw a video the other day where a YouTuber was talking about they went through and they created this entire video and their microphone was not recording. And I thought, well, how does that happen? And I didn't, you know, think of it in a negative way, like, you know, they did something necessarily to make it happen. I was just curious what the problems could be to have that kind of a thing happen. Well, last night when I was creating some of these videos, I realized the same thing after I had gotten completely done. And this particular series had been kind of a lengthy video to record. It's not a lot of content once you edit that down, but it is lengthy to, to actually do all of these steps and to go through and then edit out the, the pieces that you need, speed up the film for some things. So just so you know, I picked as pleasant a voice as I could. Uh, it doesn't sound overly robotic, uh, but you are going to hear a computer-generated text-to-speech voiceover for this video so that I didn't have to go through and completely recreate that. I just edited it down and I added the voice in where it needed to be. And in some ways, it may be a little bit more concise because I was paying so much attention to what was happening on the screen versus trying to describe it and uh, make it do this in real time. Hopefully the computer voice isn't uh, so much better than I do, but at the same time, I hope it isn't too much of a distraction. For now, let's go ahead and jump right in and show you how to sideload apps. The first thing to do when sideloading apps is to remember to use trusted sources. In this example, we are downloading our files from developer.android.com. See the link in the description and on the screen. Once you access the site, you can click on the interface that best fits your needs. For this demonstration, we are using the platform tools for Windows download. After clicking on the download, you'll have to accept the terms and conditions for use. You will see here that the file will automatically download to your downloads folder. You will want to click to open the file's location instead of just opening the file. This is important because as a zip file, it will need to be extracted. Click on extract all and you will see a new folder open with the full version of the tools. Click to open this folder. Once you open the folder you are looking for ADB and will want to open that in a terminal server window by right-clicking. This may look different based on your PC or device. In this case, we are opening it in the Windows PowerShell. Next, you will need to open a new window in your browser to download the APK file. Again, remember to use a trusted source. For this demonstration, we will be downloading from apkmirror.com. While there are a lot of pop-up windows you have to navigate around on the free site, the downloads are safe. From the search, you can look for any app you want to install. For our purposes, we will look at installing Obsidian. 
Just a reminder that not all apps come from the actual providers. For App Mirror at least, these tend to have some different designation. Edge Canary is a good example. You can see here that this is listed only as Obsidian, which should, should mean it is the official app. Click to download, but now begins the series of pop-ups we talked about. You will need to clear Windows and click again to get to the actual file. Clicking here will begin the file download. Again, you are going to want to open the folder as you are going to need this to finish the install process. Now open the platform tools window that you extracted the zip file to. You might want to close the zip file folder to make this less confusing. From here, you are going to move the APK file to the platform tools folder. I tend to rename the file so that it is easier when you go to do the actual install. We will simply rename the file Obsidian. Now, open your terminal server window, in this case PowerShell. Here is where some of the directions vary. In most, it says to simply type in adb install program name .apk. However, in my case, I had to type in .backslash adp install obsidian .apk. If you run into trouble, there is usually guidance offered by the system for syntax. You will notice here that a process had to start in order to install the file. I skipped the step of identifying the device because it is not necessary for this to work. The system will say success once the file is installed. Now is where things get a little bit weird. Obviously, you are seeing Ed's hands, but I am speaking for him. To find the app we just installed, use the right-hand slider to pull down the menu, then select More. Now, you can see all of the apps that are either native to the device or side-loaded, including the Obsidian app we just installed. Okay, to save some time, this was intentionally sped up to 10 times speed because to say that Obsidian was a hot mess on the Supernote is an understatement. To be fair, this is not a recommended or supported integration, so there is no blame to go around. This app just doesn't currently work. I just didn't want you to get the impression that it did by cutting the video. What we will do instead is take a look at the Barnes & Noble's Nook app. We have looked at the Kobo and Libby apps, which work really well. Nook works well too. Although I don't use that ecosystem currently, I now could. Here is a good example of a magazine that came free with the app. Pinch to zoom works, but one feature I personally enjoy is being able to press on the article view or page view. This makes reading the text much more accessible. Once selected, you can then just scroll up or down to read the text with some graphics. The ghosting is also handled fairly well with the right sidebar available for a full refresh. When you are done and want to go back to the full page view, you just press the button at the bottom. All right, everybody, welcome back. Thank you again for uh, bearing with me through that. It was kind of fun for me to learn how to do the text-to-speech and, and how that worked and kind of how long uh, a piece of written text was, according to the computer, in seconds and try to match that up the best I could with what was happening on the screen. And maybe sometime I'll show you that process, but it was really neat. Uh, ClipChamp, which is the Microsoft software that I use as part of the Microsoft 365 uh, subscription, uh, really does a good job of helping you do that and, and get the kind of the fine tuning down on different things. But hopefully it wasn't too distracting. Hopefully this is helpful and it gives you a good sense uh, of both the positive benefits of sideloading apps and the potential pitfalls. Obviously, Obsidian did not work very well on the A6X2. From what I've heard, it's a phenomenal program. I've downloaded it to my computer at work and I'm going to do so here at home as well just to see what it's all about. I've seen some really beautiful content in there, uh, and Brandon Boswell talks about it quite a bit. So, so I'm trying to, you know, kind of branch out, try some new things, and really dig into the organizational pieces. So that didn't work. So instead, I gave you a little tour of the, of the Nook app. So Barnes & Noble downloaded just fine. I've shown before Libby and Kobo 
And all of that worked really well. Uh, and I showed you some other things that may not, and, or at least mentioned them. Uh, OneNote, absolutely not. Uh, Google Play Books won't work because Google Services isn't enabled on these devices. Again, that has to do with licensing and uh, cost, and I, I understand completely why Rada is hesitant. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. If you enjoy the content that I make, please uh, click that like button, click subscribe, click notification, and more importantly, tell everybody you know about the channel, and hopefully they will sign in and uh, click like and subscribe as well. I will talk to you soon.